There is a divine power to demolish strongholds. In this passage, Paul tells us that even though we that we work and go to school and shop and live all over the world, we cannot fight Satan as the world fights. We cannot fight with weapons of the world. They're useless. It would be like putting a band-aid on someone's broken arm. Or someone comes at you with a machine gun and you're going to defeat them with a rubber band. It just won't work. So Paul tells us we can't fight with weapons of this world. We have something far better. And that's the power of Jesus Christ tonight. We could use tanks, machine guns, hand grenades, and atomic bombs against Satan. And that wouldn't stop him. What we have to have at our disposal is something that is so much better. It's something that Satan cannot stand against. What we have at our disposal is a divine power. And what we can do with this divine power, we can demolish all strongholds. Any stronghold that's keeping you today. Any stubborn blocks that's keeping you today. Any obstacles that's keeping you today. By the name of Jesus Christ can be defeated. And all the devils in hell has to flee at his name. So what is a stronghold? It's a word taken from a military context. And it's only used here in the Bible. It describes a castle or fort with its moats, walls, turrets, and towers. It's defended by a handful of resolute determined people. History records that many times a castle like that withstood years of attack because it was so difficult to dislodge its defenders. In essence, that's what we build up against. But as Paul tells us, we cannot demolish strongholds on our own. We can de demolish them, but we can't, cannot do it on our own. We must use that divine power that's at our disposal. For a few moments, I want to talk about Satan. It's not something I want to do, but we need to understand our enemy a little. But Satan is an active player in our lives. And, and if we don't understand the way he works, then how will we know how to defeat him? People are trying to determine how they can expose the weaknesses. Just like the devil. Where's the weak spot of player so we can attack? The goal is to beat the other team. The players get themselves in shape and study their opponents. In the business world, companies examine the market conditions and make their strategies accordingly. We look at what's working and what's not, and we make our moves. It's all about winning, and when you win, someone else loses. That sounds harsh, but that's the reality of the world we live in. The point is that every game is a battle. And if you don't know where your opponent's strengths and weaknesses are, then you're going to be in trouble in sports. And the chances of winning grow slimmer and slimmer. It goes to the point where we try to survive, not strive. And it's not winning. Winning is living the life, the abundant life God offers us. If we're struggling to make it, we're not winning. If we're giving in to the temptations, we're not winning. If we sit back and relax and not do nothing about it, we're not winning. If we don't fight, we're not winning. If we just stop and stop obeying God and stop going to church, stop doing what God wants us to do, we're not winning. It's the life Jesus tells us is available if we would only trust in Him. It's the second half of John 10 and 10 says... It's the moment of what Satan offers us, and it's the enticements of what he offers. Satan offers destructions, but Jesus offers us abundant life. Yet we're surrounded by the struggle day by day. We're surrounded by the struggle to be good, to win. It's difficult, isn't it? We try, but we seem to stumble over ourselves. Temptation after temptation gets thrown in our way, and we just seem to blindly walk right into it. It's like it never existed, and boom, smack, we do the unthinkable, and then justify our actions 
just like there was absolutely nothing wrong. 